There's a name that can silence every fear. There's a love that embraces the heartache, the pain, and the tears. Through my faith and my doubting, I know one thing for sure. His word is unfailing. His promise secure. Don't know I'll stop again. Everything will be all right. Your whole world's in his hands In the darkness and the trials He's faithful and he is true The whole world's in his hands You don't want to stop yet Oh, 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 oh. Everything will be alright Oh, oh, oh. Mm, yeah uh, Father, you say everything's gonna be alright but my circumstances say I won't last through the night I need your word to hold me now, I need you to pull me through I need a miracle, a breakthrough, I need you They say you hold the whole universe in your hand But my world's falling apart like it is made of sand Am I small enough to slip through the cracks? Can you take my broken pieces and put them back? Give me faith, you believe you are on my side Open my eyes and see you working in my life Let the past remind me you'd never fail Tell my soul it is well Y todo va a estar bien Everything will be alright The whole world's in his hands Your whole world's in his hands In the darkness, in the trials He's faithful and he's true Your whole world's in his hands Y todo va a estar bien Everything oh Te confieso a corazón abierto Que todo es muy incierto en este desierto Mi vulnerabilidad está al descubierto Siento que mi barca está muy lejos de su puerto ¿Por qué será que ya no sale el sol en mis días? ¿Por qué mis noches son tan frías? ¿Por qué será que siento que me falta algo? ¿Por qué este camino gris se siente tan largo? Sé que está sobrando aunque no te sienta Sé que está sobrando aunque no te vea Sé que voy a salir de esta odisea Sé que voy a ganar esta pelea Sé que va a cesar esta marea temporaria Que en ti yo viviré una vida extraordinaria Que aunque no puedo entender Me consuela saber que Todo, yo sé que Todo va a estar bien Todo va a estar bien Everything will be alright The whole world's in his hands Your whole world's in his hands In the darkness, in the trials He's faithful and he's true Your whole world's in his hands You don't know I started yet Oh, 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 oh. Everything will be alright He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. Todo el mundo en su mano está. Todo el mundo en su mano está. Todo el mundo en su mano está.
Good morning. We want to welcome you today to Annadale Baptist Church. For those of you who are watching through our live stream on Facebook, we want to welcome you to our worship service here today. Uh, thank you for joining with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to invite you to stand, please. And I want to read this passage of Scripture. And let, the, let these words from the Word of God be the, the central focus, the central theme of why we are here today. We are here to worship and honor our God, our King Jesus. First Chronicles 29, 11 says, Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. There is no one like our God. God, you are worthy of worship. God, you are worthy of praise. Receive our offerings of worship to you today.
Amen. I want to give everyone a, a welcome this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because we're here to worship the Lord and we are energized and, and ready, you know, to just exalt Him throughout this uh, hour. And also, I want to welcome those that are online because people do follow us online. Okay? And uh, we also want to welcome them and show them that we are pursuing to be a true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, this week, don't forget uh, Veterans Day. It's coming up, and today we had a little bit of recognition in our fellowship prior to this service and recognized some of our veterans. And I want to ask them to stand at this time. What are our veterans here? Just stand where you are right there. You know, right there where you are. If you're a veteran, just stand where you are. And uh, let's give them a... Um, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the Lord... Um, uh, I believe the Bible says the, Lo the Lord of hosts. The Bible talks about that God is the Lord of hosts, the one that is before his army, you know, of believers. And, and, but we thank the, the Lord for those that gave uh, their lives and, and those who served in the military so that we might have freedoms, freedom to, to, to worship. Yes. A lot of, a lot of uh, countries, they don't do this. What we're doing here freely and openly. And so we are are thankful for that. And I want to ask uh, uh, Brother Juan to come forward. He's going to say something concerning a Christmas event. And, um, okay, there it is. All right. Well, good morning, church. I just uh, want to come up here and I'll let you guys know. I know uh, for those that have been here for a while, uh, we've done our Christmas dinner, white elephant exchange gift, and unfortunately due to COVID, we were unable to perform that uh, little get together uh, last year. So with everything kind of just going a little bit back to normal, we decided to go ahead and put that event on this year. Mm -hmm. So the details for that is gonna be the adults Christmas, ugly sweater, uh, white elephant dinner. Uh, it's scheduled for Friday, December 10th at 6.30 here at the church. For those that want to participate in the ugly sweater, by all means, you know, decorate your sweater whichever way you want. Uh, but if you choose not to, definitely uh, dress uh, however you want. I mean, I guess formal somewhat uh, here to the church. And uh, it's going to be $20 a plate. And the reason we're doing $20 a plate right now is uh, we're looking at it being catered, which we do have one kind of set up. But some of that money is also going to go towards a photo booth that we are planning to also have here uh, for that event. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so it'd be twenty dollars a plate. Uh, that would cover the photo booth and the uh, dinner itself. And the white elephant details on that is a ten dollar gift max, not in between five and ten dollars, nothing over. But if you choose to participate and go overboard, by all means, God bless you. Uh, and the deadline for to sign up is going to be Wednesday, December eighth. Uh, that would be on uh, during the. Uh, Bible study here. So any time between now and December 8th, if you want to sign up and participate, get a hold of me. We will have all that information uh, on one of these uh, boards here for next Sunday, and that information will be going on our Facebook page uh, in the coming days when I get a hold of Omar with all the details. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to me after church. Again, it's the White Elephant just make sure I, the adults white elephant ugly sweater Christmas dinner here at the church Friday December 10th at 6 30 20 dollars a plate covers your plate and the photo booth and ten dollars uh, gift max on that okay so thank you amen and we're at, we're a church that has fun amen it's a no, no problem with that, to have fun and to be able to laugh. And, you know, I want to, once again, I want to thank the church for all the gifts on behalf of myself, Pastor Osvaldo, Pastor Joe, uh, you know, all those gifts that people did. I enjoyed that steak that I ate the other day. And <laughs> it was a blessing. And, uh, but uh, everyone, you know, every, every gift, no matter what size, no matter how small, everything was great. So I want to thank you about that. And it's really not about... Uh, gifts, okay, even though, don't forget Christmas, okay, no, never mind, but God bless you, let's keep serving uh, the Lord and singing with joy, thank you. Amen, let's stand please.
trust in you and only in you, Lord. We trust in your word, Lord God, because your word never fails us, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord God. Speak to us now, Lord God, through your precious holy word, Lord God. Use our pastor, Father God, to speak to us in a way, Lord God, that the, the words would come forth with power and with authority that would touch every heart that is here, every heart that is li listening through live stream. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. And we are a Bible-centered church, Christ-centered church, Bible-centered church. And that's the way we want it to be. We want to know what Christ has for us, what God wants to tell us, and not the opinion of men, and not the philosophies of men. And that's why we're going to look at the Word of God this morning in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And of course, uh, verse 15 will be the key verse, but... Um, you know, I really have to read the context here, and that's part of what the message is about studying the Word of God seriously and correctly, correctly. And so, here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning with verse 14, this is the New American Standard Bible. This is my favorite translation um, since I was in college, but this is uh, chapter 2. Uh, verses 14. Listen to what the Bible says here. This is Paul speaking to his spiritual son, Timothy. He says, remind them these things. This, these are, this is advice. These are things that he wants them to know. Young pastor, and, and, and this is what he says before he goes to be with the Lord. What would you tell your, your children? This is what Paul tells uh, his spiritual son here, Timothy. He says, remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about with words. See that? A lot of preachers can wrangle a lot with words, and people are, you know, tickled, influenced, and what have you, which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved. Highlight that. Mark that. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling accurately the word of truth, but avoid worldly and empty chatter. You know, sometimes there's all kinds of stuff, you know, that's in the church, and for it will lead to further ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Gangrene. You got to take it out. You got to cut it out. Among them, Hymenius and Philetus, men who have gone astray from the truth. Part of the church, but look at what happened. They went away from the church. In the church, that could happen? Yes. Saying that the resurrection has already taken place. We're good, we're perfect. Anybody feel like they've arrived there? We're not going to arrive in this world, brothers and sisters. I hate to tell you. Until what? until we get, get to heaven and see Jesus face to face and we will become, as the Lord sees us, we'll become no more sin in heaven, no more pain, no more tear, no more death, all these wonderful things. That will not happen in heaven any longer. And then it says in verse 18, men who have gone astray from the truth saying that the resurrection has already taken place and thus they have set the, the faith of some. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. See that? Lord knows who's, who, if you're real or not. You don't have to please me. You don't have to show me. You gotta, you, you gotta be honest and truthful to the Lord. Because your fruit will, will declare it. Your evidence, the evidence will be there. The Lord knows who are His. Let everyone who names the name of the Lord abstain from wickedness, sin. Now in the large house there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and earth, earthenware, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if a man cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, Useful to who? To Jesus, the Master, prepared for every good work. Now flee from those useful lusts. 
This is for all, all of us too, even if we're uh, 65 or 60, useful lust could be something that we could all experience. And pursue righteousness, a holy life, faith, love, peace, and those who are called on the Lord from a pure heart. But refuse foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. And the Lord's bound servant must not be quarrelsome, but be, be kind to all, able to teach, patient with, when wronged, and gentle, gentleness when correcting those who are in opposition. If perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth. See there? Again the truth. And that they may come to their senses. Come to... Has that ever happened to you as a believer? You come to your senses, you know, okay, I see the light. Remember that with the prodigal son. He came to his senses. Remember that? And he goes, oh man, I'm wrong. I got to go back to my father. And, and that's a, the way it is with the, our Lord. And it says here uh, to end, you know, coming to our senses leading to the knowledge of truth, verse 25, and that they may come to their senses, escape the snare of the devil, having been held captive to him to, to do his will. Father, thank you for your word, now, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord. Speak to us now, Lord, in a powerful way, in a loving way, Lord. And help us to be attentive to your word. And change us, Father, by your Bible and by your Holy Spirit, who helps us to become more and more like you every day in every way. For we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And so this is wonderful. This is his advice to this young uh, man, Timothy, who he brought to faith. This is what he's telling him here because uh, Timothy is, is experiencing d difficulties. Hey, listen, pastors, leaders uh, in church can get ulcers from people in the church. And maybe people in the church get ulcers from pastors too. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this can, can happen. And I know if a person is truly called of God, you know, he's going to, the, the work will show it. Don't worry. <laughs> Either he is a true man of God, or he will begin to become, he knows how to manipulate the church and get money from them and do what he pleases. So either... Uh, he is for real or he's a fraud. But here this is talking to all of us. Not only pastors and deacons. Because the genre here, there are different genres in, in, in the New Testament, in the Bible. What do we mean by that? We mean different types of, of books in, in the Bible. Uh, uh, that, you know, like uh, Revelation, where would that be? That's apocalyptic, you know, there. It's talking about the end times and... And then uh, here we have First and Second Timothy. What kind of genre? Those of you that took liter literature, you know, English literature, you know, there's different types of, of writing and literature. And here this, this is pastoral. These are pastoral, uh, First and Second Timothy and, and Titus. Good for us who are pastors and leaders to read what it says here about the qualifications for leaders and pastors. Uh, but in the end, this is for all of us. Amen? Amen? Because all Scripture is inspired by God and useful for us. Yes. That's why this is talking to each and every one of us here. Warren Wors Worsby, this wonderful, excellent Bible study teacher. Remember that name. You could Google it and find so much information. He's written, you know, the whole New Testament. You want to... Now every single verse, every single chapter, the, the man has done that. And you know, he became a Christian at a Youth for Christ rally. Youth for Christ rally. You know, we have Youth for Christ, we have Young Life. These are wonderful ministries. And, and he became a Christian at a rally, at a tender age. And he started devouring the Word of God. I love that. Devouring the Word of God. What do you... He was eating up, soaking up the Word of God. Oh, I would love to see many young people here. How many of you young people are under 18? Come on, raise up your hands. See that? <laughs> Don't lie over there. <laughs> he was soaking in the Word of God. Oh, I love to, to see young people that are soaking up the Word of God. 
And he said these words. I think Bible study is one of the most exciting things I ever do. His quote and unquote there. I've ever done is studying the Word of God. What? How could that be football? How could that be basketball? You know, sports? How could that be entertainment? How could... That's what he said. He got excited about studying the Word of God. And you could do that on your own. It's not enough just to come here for one, one, one uh, uh, service. And, okay, I got my fill. I'm ready for the week. No! <laughs> it's like eating vegetables today and then try to go without eating the, the rest of the week. See how you, see how you do. Don't do that, okay? If you've got, you got physical problems, don't, don't do that. That's not a healthy thing to do. We got to eat. We got to be fed. We got to be nourished. And the same way in the Word of God. I can't just have my one minute a week thing. I got to get into the Word of God. I have to have that intake in the Word of God. And so this is what it's saying here. And people go by uh, approval ratings, you know. And, and here's the first point here. What is, what is Paul telling uh, Timothy saying? Go by God's approval, not man's. God's approval must, yeah, that must supersede all approval from any man or any organization or anyone. I know we want to please our, our bosses, you know, and, and those of you that are in school, you know, I guess they don't do that anymore. Remember, the, polish the, the apple and then leave the apple on. They don't, the kids are like, what is that? <laughs> Paul, you know, and, you know, people used to do that, try to be on the good side of your teacher, your boss, whatever, and, you, you want to get his approval. Hey, did he see me? Am I a good worker? And You know, it's good to be that. But the greatest approval is from God. That's what he's telling his young uh, disciple here. Get God's approval. That's what it's saying here in verse 15, the key verse here. I love this verse. You know that my aunt, uh, she watched the service this morning, but... Um, you know, she said, uh, she told me last year, she said, do you know that your, your mom's fa uh, life verse for you was 2 Timothy 2.15? I go, what? I didn't know she had a life verse for me that she claimed and said, Lord, I, I, this is for my son. That's tremendous. I want to be approved by God. You know that they have approval ratings? All the presidents. I don't care what party. They're every day, they, hey, the, your approval ratings are at 30. Your approval ratings are at 40. Your approval ratings are at 27. Your approval rate. I, I read about that. Different presidents, Obama and Hillary, or Hillary Clinton also, and all these individual senators, and everybody wants to know, what, what's my approval? You know what I said? Maybe I need to do that with my head deacon here. <laughs> He's back there. Hey, brother, what, what's the approval rating? Uh, sorry, brother, it's at 10 right <laughs> Among the church, you know, or, or it's, it's at 80 right now with the church. Hey, okay, every day, you know, should I need to do that? No. I mean, I need to know if people like me or not or whatever, you know, but, you know, that, that is important. If they all hate me, then what am I but, but you know what? Our, the approval ratings that, that I should have, and they, they even have them in sports. Some, some coaches want to know, how am I doing this week in my approval rating? You know, what are yours? <laughs> or, uh, you know, they're going to hire you over here at this football team, or they're gonna, you're going to uh, run for a political office. You know, you need to know what the approval ratings are. And the Lord says, no, that is secondary. If you're a follower of mine, you want to know my approval ratings. Amen? <laughs> Oh, no, no, let's not go there. I don't, I don't want the Lord to know how I'm doing. <laughs> why not? Why, why shouldn't the Lord know how you're doing in every aspect of your life? How are you doing in your time? How are you doing in your talent? How are you doing with your finances? How are you doing with your marriage? How are you doing as a father? How are you doing as... A... If I gave him my heart and I, gave it, I told him to be my Lord, that means that he is the boss. He is the master. He has the last word. Well, if you put it that way, brother. <laughs> that's what the Bible says and that's what Paul is telling him. Many of us want to receive the blessing and the praise. Eh, right? uh, do I look okay? You know, Am I okay? In... 
We always want to seek people's approval. approval. A lot of pastors want to be popular among their people. You know, do I look all right? Am I okay? You know, am I wearing the right... You know, I can't go looking for the perfect church. Right now as a pastor, you know, it, it drives me crazy because I know that some people are looking at five, ten preachers during the week and they're comparing, you know, oh, look at, I wonder why Brother Oscar doesn't preach like this. I wonder why Brother Oscar doesn't talk like this. I wonder why, you know what I mean? And pastors could do the same with churches. <laughs> when was my last sabbat sabbatical, brother? Right? Did you ever have a sabbatical? <laughs> I better, I'm not going to get into that, okay? <laughs> But some, some pastors have sabbaticals. But I'm thankful to the Lord. I'm not here to complain or whatever because I'm, I'm serving Christ. My reward is the Lord. I don't have to seek man's approval or even the church's approval. I have to seek the Lord's approval. Amen? Because someone might not like what I say sometimes. Someone might not like us for whatever reason. But he's telling them here, seek God's approval. See, that's what he's telling Timothy. In your effort, in your time, in your talents. Wow, I didn't know the Lord was going to do, you know, check me on those things. He does. Because it's talking here in this verse. Listen, the, here in the Greek and everything else, you know, that you study here. You know, what, it, what does it mean here? Uh, it, it means that uh, like a... Like a farmer, like a, a person who's plowing the field. He makes that furrow. You know, and I love to, to go uh, through uh, the different areas here of, of Dinuva and, and, you know, going on 180. I love to see, you know, those fields that are so straight. You know, those, the, they, they were plowing those tractors. Now you have tractors. Back in the, the day of the Lord, you know, they had oxen and, and, and they would make sure, you know, that they're going straight and... That's what he's referring here. See, God's approval that you're going straight, that you're uh, rightly related to the Word of God, what he's saying, that your life is reflecting that. How do you do that unless you study the Bible? Well, what does it mean here? And, and I have a responsibility to make sure I give you the true meaning of the Word of God. That's why I love expository preaching. Not just thematic about themes, you know, oh, let's just talk about the love of God. I'm not, a, you know, once in a while that could be used. But the greatest preaching is when the pastor takes a scripture and, and lays, out, lays out the meaning of that, of that text. Is the pastor telling me the truth? We're still on um, truth matters. Because so many people are buying into lies. Left and right believers are also. And sending a lot of ministry, a lot of money to these ministries where they're not telling them the truth. They're only telling them what they want to hear. And that was, that's what was going on here in this verse. But you see those furrows, those, they're, they're straight. For, that plowing is, is straight. Sometimes our, our plowing is kind of crooked. You know, because, because we're doing what we want to do and it doesn't line up with the Word of God. And then I also see here that it talks about a foundation, the solid foundation. Well, we know that Christ is the, the true foundation of the church, the cornerstone. The Bible says that. But in this context, it's also talking about the leaders and pastors. And as Christians, what kind of foundation are we giving to you here? Some of you, I've been here six years, going on seven, seven years uh, in the church itself, but as a senior pastor... I'm responsible for, my, for uh, my teaching. I'm responsible for my preaching. I'm responsible for the testimony that I give to the church here. It's not uh, perfection, as one pastor in Southern California says, but it's a direction of my life that God is looking at. And the greatest compliment that I've ever received in my life is, brother, you're the real thing. Why? Because you've seen fake? You've seen fraud? You've seen... I, you know, when people say that, I said, thank you, thank you, thank you for that compliment. You know, it's not great preaching or great whatever, you know, even those things are, are, are great. I'm, but the Lord doesn't look at the number. This, this pastor's doing good because he has 20,000 or 50,000. Or, or, no, the Lord wants to know where there's a church that is honoring him. Remember, the Lord had a church of what? Of 11. 
and one of them was a bad apple. Never, never was a true. Read John 17. Judas. And let, yet the Lord wants me to be faithful when, with who he gives me here in the church. I'm responsible. I'm responsible for you. I've been doing some funerals lately and uh, three or four. I asked Brother Father help me with one and, you know, and, you know, it sometimes can become overwhelming. But this, you know, this young raider that, uh, you know, gave up his life just, uh, you know, drunk and going at 150 miles just because he has a car, a Corvette or what, what have you. And, and all of a sudden, life ended for that young lady, 23 years old. Her whole life ahead of her. Young. Ended by this rich, uh, uh, foolish uh, player. And they say that the team has, will, will even uh, send, immediately send someone to pick them up when they get drunk or whatever. But see how quickly life goes. We need to pay attention to Jesus. Put our focus on Jesus. What was happening here? There was a lot of people that were self-serving. I pray that when you would come to Annadale, we're not self-serving. You know, everybody, okay, I'm doing good. I'm doing, thank you, thank you, you know. And we got people who are self-serving. All they're concerned about is themselves. This was happening here in this church. Doctrinal errors. They mentioned two people right there. These two individuals that are mentioned there. You know, sharing false doctrine. What were they saying? Right there in verse 18. They were saying that you know, we don't have to wait for the resurrection of our bodies. The resurrection, uh, you know, the, the final resurrection, we've all, we're already perfect. We're already good. Listen, you're never going to be perfect in this world, in this life. We've been saved, we've been forgiven, but our natural, our, our sinful nature is still there. It's not, it hasn't been redeemed yet. One day it will be, one day we'll go to heaven. No more sin, no more uh, sinful nature. But right now, still, that flesh has control. Satan is still working on us. The world is still all these different things. That's why even though I received the bath, now I have to wash my hands every day. 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Are you up to date on your hand washing your sins? Because God can use any kind of vessel. Tall, short, Handsome, ugly, whatever, different colors, different shapes, different, but he can't use a dirty vessel. That's what he's saying in all these uh, verses here. You know, we, we preachers have not been, I, I wonder if, you know, uh, uh, the most sought after pastor, you know, there's some past, I'm the most sought after pastor. They look all over the nation for the pastor for this church. I'm not against that. They have millions of dollar budgets. They can do that. They can look for the best. And... But you know what? Um, you have to be called to be a pastor and a preacher. You have to be appointed. You have to be uh, uh, anointed by the Word of God, by the Lord. Are you anointed? Are you appointed by God? I can't show up one day, hey, uh, you know who I am? You know, I'm going to do you a favor. I don't know where they get this attitude when Christ said, be humble like Jesus, amen? I don't know why some of us preachers are cocky. Where, look, you know, if I, get, if I leave, the whole church is going to fall down. I don't know where this comes from. But the Bible says that we need to be holy. Are we holy? We're royal priesthood. But that's what he's talking about in verses 20 and 22, that we have to be, you know, these kinds of vessels, these kinds of instruments God can use. He can't just use anybody. You know, we, you know that's why even pastors can, can you know, forfeit or, or, or can, you know, lose their opportunity to be preachers or pastors because they gave in to certain sins. And they lost their opportunity. They're castaways that Paul calls them. 
to be used. Not that God can't forgive. Listen, God is the God of second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance. But to be a preacher, to be, you better be appointed and you better be uh, anointed. Because you need to come in the power of God. Like Paul said, short, you know, not good looking, whatever Paul, you know, at least what, that's what the Bible says. And remember the Lord Jesus Christ, even Isaiah 253 said that even his aspect, even his form wasn't something to admire, like the world. You know, oh man, he's... That was Jesus, that was the Apostle Paul. But yet they didn't come in, in physical, they came in power, in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we can feel the presence of God in this place. Because the Lord is here. The Lord is present. This is what we're talking about here. And the second point there, not only, you know, was he had to be approved, but you also have, you know, he had to be relentless. I love that word. Relentless. In his focus on who? On the gospel. That's what it means to correctly handle the truth. Verse 15. Correctly handle the truth. I can know my, my Greek inside and out. I can know my Hebrew, which I did take in seminary a year, another year in Hebrew, these languages of the Bible. Know them inside and out. Even speak Greek, even speak Hebrew. But I need to be faithful to the Lord in my life. The gospel is important. You say, all they preach in that church is the gospel. That's all. They can't preach anything new. They don't have new jokes that I can... Well, you better hear the gospel a thousand times in whatever church you go to, or ten thousand times, because if they're not preaching the gospel, I would run from that church. And the gospel is more that, hey, God can forgive you and go to heaven. The gospel includes the wrath of God. Amen? Oh, you one of those... Uh, Brimstone and fire preaching, you know. If the Bible says it, I'm going to preach it. Amen. Call me old-fashioned, old school. I don't care. I'm going to preach the Word of God. That's what it's talking about. You know, being faithful to the gospel. It has to talk about hell. It has to talk about the wrath of God. It has to talk about the judgment of God. Uh, the Bible says that. In 1 Corinthians 9.27, the, what the, what the first thing after death is what? Judgment of God. Read it there. Man lives once, then comes what? The judgment of God. Oh, I don't want to do that, because then we're not going to have too many people in our church. I don't want to do it because I want people to you know, feel good. I, that's what was happening in this church. They were teaching and, and, and telling people what they wanted uh, to hear. If you come over here, the pastor will help you how to be rich, how to be healthy, how to be, you know, I desire blessings upon your life, but I'm going to preach the word of God. It was a gangrene, it says there. Imagine that, killing the body, killing the church. That, that false doctrine, false teaching that was there. That's what was going on. But when somebody is teaching a false doctrine, this week somebody told me, you know, uh, Pastor Oscar, you know, I met someone and, and, and they're good people and they're Christians. And I go, really, what, what, what church do they go to? They go to this big church in Utah, you know, or they're from that big church, you know. And, and I said, okay, I know who it is. False doctrine, a sect, I know who you're talking about. They don't teach Christ like we teach Him. They say we can become, all, all of us can become gods. I didn't know that, you know. And, well, that's, that's why we, it's important to study, you know, what, what does other people believe, other people think, these people that go door to door. Well, we need to just love them and say that they're, we will love them. We want them to know the truth, but I'm going to be uh, truthful with them. It was gangrene, it says there. Look at, we, we can start compromising. You say, you know what, about race. You know what I'm proclaiming? I'm proclaiming the gospel. I'm proclaiming the plan of Jesus. Not the Republican, not the Democrat, not the independent plan. The, God, the plan of Jesus Christ I offer to people. I was visiting a, a niece yesterday and, 
you know, African Americans, and hey, I got African American, I got white, I got Hispanic, I got uh, English, I got, you know, everything, you know, grandkids with all these different, you know, and, but I want them to know the right plan, which is the plan of Jesus to go to heaven. I don't know if I could ever believe that one party or one individual is going to fix everything in this world. No, Jesus will fix everything one day. No more racism. No more tear. No more death. No more hurt. You know, we're going to be in a perfect place. That's what I'm proclaiming. That's what I'm saying. If they want to silence me, quiet me, let them do it. But the Lord says, give up on that chatter. Give up on that chatter. What happens when we compromise? Okay, we start saying, hey, we, I don't believe in that creation that God created. I believe in Darwin. I believe in evolution. I believe, how many of you believe you're, you're, you're monkeys? Come on. Anybody? Wow. <laughs> I believe the Lord created a man and a woman named Adam and Eve. And this is what we have as the world. I believe he created the universe, the galaxies, with his word. I don't believe these other uh, false lies. But we ought to do it gently, okay? We ought to tell people with love. And, and the final thing is this, that, that he tells them here, we got to spend time in the Word of God. We can't just, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. No, get into the Word of God. Take advantage of Bible studies. We're not into gimmicks. We're not into, uh, you know, things that we could start doing that. Hey, let's see who brings most people to church. We'll kick a football over the, the goalpost right here. We'll put goalposts up here. And every time somebody brings someone, we'll kick, you know, the football over, you know, I don't know what gimmicks. The final thing is that they told him to flee, flee these youthful things. Why does he say youthful lust, youthful desires? What's he picking on, young people? <laughs> no, but young people are still... You know, do things without what? Thinking sometimes. I know because I did it. I broke a few glasses out of churches and don't do that, young people. <laughs> but I, I, did, I did things without thinking. That's what he's talking about here. And as believers, even as adults, we do some things without thinking through things. And then we don't have patience. Sometimes young people don't have patience. That's why they say, have we got, we got to there, Papa? We got to there, we just, we just started 15 minutes. We're three hours away from getting to our destination. Young people, that's what it uses there. They're impatient. You know, they get overexcited without thinking. And, and he's talking to us as believers about that. And I want to challenge you with this. Let's stand. You know, how are you doing in your life? How is, 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 the God, is God saying, I approve of your life, Oscar? Isn't that wonderful? I want the Lord's, I want Him to rate me. I want Him to prove me. He loves me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never throw me away. He's a wonderful God, a loving God, forgiving God. Why don't I want to live for Him? Through my life I demonstrate of my faith that it's grounded in Christ. How do people know that I'm grounded, I'm established in Christ, and not being taken by every wind of doctrine? Hey, you believe that? I'll believe it too. No, I'm grounded in Christ. And I will die in Christ. I will die in Christ. I don't care. Any, you know, that's, that's where my, I, would, I want to say like Paul, to, for me to live is Christ and to die is to, to gain. Right, and are, am I walking by faith? Am I walking under the power of the Holy Spirit? I'm not saying we aren't pers to persuade people and to, and to motivate. That's part of our preaching and everything but in the end it has to be a God thing it has to be something God does in the church not the pastor not the preacher not the and then finally is there evidence in my life is there proof in my life is there fruit in my life is there action in my life that we are the children of God well now that you put it that way I never th let's put it that way I'm in, the, I'm in the grip of the Lord. Is there evidence in my life that I belong to Him? And it says there, flee, run! Do I do that with sin? Or am I, you know, Joseph, Joseph uh, ran when Potiphar's wife wanted to seduce him and, and do sexual things with him. He took off, even though he was falsely accused and went to prison. He was willing 
to pay the price for running, fleeing, pursuing, not going up to a rattlesnake and, oh, beautiful rattlesnake. Yeah, let's see you do, try to do that, but many of us do that. You say, what, brother? Yes, we, we go up to things that we know we should flee from, and we're out there, oh, mira that que bonito. Look at how wonderful. We found a dead cat outside the door right here this morning. You know, a little beautiful cat. I don't know what Brother Omar did with it, but uh, it was right up there, right outside the door right there. And he came here to die, you know, maybe last night. But you know what? The, the Lord loves us more than that little creature. Amen. You know that we're more valuable than animals? And, and that we're in a, another level? We're not angels either. <laughs> Amen, brother. They're another creation. We're not going to go to heaven and become like angels, okay? We're, we are, are in a special way above the angels, above the animals. We are in the Lord's eye, in the Lord's uh, view, and He loves us so much. Why aren't we living for Him then? I pray that this morning you would say, you know what, I'm going to get my approval from the Lord. No more from other people, whatever I'm going to... Try to live for His approval and for pleasing God in my life. Let's pray. Father, I thank You, Lord, for Your Word. I thank You, Lord. There might be somebody here, Lord, that doesn't know You. Just like in an instant, that young lady that died, 23 years old, Lord, her life was just, just taken like that, Father. Help us not to play Russian roulette with our lives. If right now I don't know if I died today that I would go to heaven. Help me to help me right now. Help me to have faith. Help me to believe in you, Lord. Help me to trust you and say, Lord, save me. He throws out the lifesaver, but people are not taking it. And I don't know if this young lady knew Jesus, but if she didn't know Jesus, she's lost forever. Oh, help us to understand just how important this message is of the gospel. I pray that some of us here would make a decision, Lord, to be totally committed to you, Father, totally faithful to you. Help us to go from this place feeling challenged, feeling motivated, feeling, Lord, persuaded that we have convictions for Jesus. And I am convinced and I'm not going to go back even if people tell me that I'm doing wrong. But if it's in the Bible and that's what the Lord wants me to do, I'm going to do it. No matter what the cost is, I'm willing to pay the price for following Jesus. Just like so many of my sisters and brothers all over the world are dying for their faith. The greatest challenge I have was getting up this morning and get out of bed. These brothers and sisters all over the world are dying every day because they say, I love Jesus. And they're, they're paying the price for saying that in the countries where they're at. That's a faith worth giving my life for. Thank you, Jesus. You're my all in all. Lead us from this place with joy, with peace, because we have the plan of Jesus in our, in our view, the gospel and we will give our lives because Paul said, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Woe is me. May we also feel that commitment, that conviction. And may we also be willing to pay the price. In Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen, amen. Go forward. Thank you. Go forward. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I travel 